Hey guys, Viren here. We are going to go ahead and look at our radical expressions today. So first things first, if you have your FERPA, please make sure um, to bring that to me. Otherwise, before we get to that, make sure that your FERPA is signed by both yourself and your parent or guardian by Friday. I need that in as soon as possible. Um, take a moment, pause the video, check your answers from yesterday. We want to make sure that we are understanding what we're doing. So reach out if you have questions. Let me help you. Um, exponents is going to be something that we're going to work a lot with. So you want to make sure that you fully understand those properties. All right, operations on radicals. So looking at those notes. First things first, we want to um, know what our perfect squares are. Our perfect squares are going to help us solve these radicals. So to find my perfect squares, I've kind of started this off here but you're looking at one times one to find the first one, two times two to find the second one, three times three to find the third, so on and so forth. So if I were to continue, I went all the way up to 10, I would still have 121, 144, 169, 196, 225. So you could make this list on any sheet of paper that I give you, okay? You're going to need to have this list down or know how to find this list for your quizzes. I will not be giving this to you. So make sure you understand how to find your perfect squares. So we're going to use our perfect squares when we're simplifying. Basically, first things first, you want to look and see, is that number an actual perfect square? So if I'm looking at my list, 64 is a perfect square. It's the eighth number in my list. The square root of 64 is going to give me just eight. In this situation, I would be done. If I'm looking at the square root of 500, okay, 500 is not a perfect square. So what I have to do is I have to split 500 up into two different numbers. The first number needs to be a number from my perfect squares list, and the second one is whatever you'd multiply it by to get back to 500. So if I'm looking at my list, you always want the biggest perfect square that would go into this. So I know 100 is the biggest one that I would do. 100 times five is going to give me back up to the 500, where the first number is from my perfect squares list. So now the square root of 100, that's the 10th number in my list. So it's 10, because 10 times 10 is gonna give me 100. Square root of five is not in my list, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave it as square root of five. And that would be fully simplified. So you're gonna have to do a bunch of simplifications today. Make sure that the first number comes from your perfect squares list and the second number is whatever you would multiply it by to get back to the original. The next thing you're gonna have to do is your product rule. Okay, so product rule basically remember is just multiplication. So when you're multiplying, okay, when I'm multiplying, you multiply the number out front times the number out front and then the number underneath the radical times the number underneath the radical. And then you're going to try to simplify just like we did. So if there's no numbers out front, they're imaginary ones. So I would do one times one, which would get me one. But I don't really need that there, so I'm going to leave it out. And then I'm going to do 5x times 10x. So 5 times 10 is going to give me 50. x times x is going to give me x to the 2, because remember when you multiply, you add the powers. Now you try to simplify. So 50, I'm gonna split it up, one number from my perfect squares list and one number not. So I know that 25 is from my list and two, 25 times two gets me back up to 50. The other thing I need to simplify is x to the two. So what we do is you can write that out as x times x and you circle your pairs and pairs come out front as one variable. So I know that the square root of 25 is going to give me five. I'm gonna have an X out front because I have one pair coming out front. And then the square root of two, I cannot simplify anymore, so I'm just gonna leave it as the square root of two. Let's look at the next one here. Number out front times number out front. So two times one is two. Number underneath times number underneath. So I'm gonna get two square root of 18. And now we're gonna try to split 18 up. So perfect square for my list that goes into 18, I know is nine, nine times two. So nine is going to be the square root of three. 
Okay, I still have this two out front that I have. When you have two numbers out front, remember we're multiplying them. And then I have the square root of two, which I can't simplify. So last step, two times three is going to give me six square root of two. Okay, so multiplying, multiply numbers out front, multiply numbers underneath, and then simplify. You're also gonna deal with a quotient rule. Remember, this is just dividing. Okay. So when we're looking at dividing, basically what you want to do is you want to take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So this is the same thing as saying the square root of 25 over the square root of 16. So if I'm looking at both of these, both of these numbers are actually perfect squares. So I can simplify right away. The square root of 25 is going to give me five and the square root of 16 is going to give me four. There are no radicals left, so that would be my answer and I'm done. The trick with the second one here is, I've already split it up into the square root of 150 x to the third over two x. Now, I cannot split two x up, okay? The problem that I have there is, there's no perfect square that goes into two and I can't make any pairs with x. But we do not like having the radical in the denominator. So we have to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. So you multiply top and bottom by what you're trying to get rid of, which is the square root of 2x. So now we're going to do kind of what we did on multiplying, right? Because we're multiplying top with top, bottom with bottom. Underneath times underneath. So 150 times 2 is going to give me 300. x to the third times x is going to give me x to the fourth over 2 times 2 is going to give me 4, x times x is going to give me x squared. So now I'm going to break both these up separately. So I'm going to look at 300 x to the fourth first. Breaking 300 up into 100 times 3. If I'm looking at x to the fourth, I have four x's. So I'm going to have two pairs coming out front. So I have Square root of 100, which is 10. Two x's out front, so x to the 2. Square root of 3. That's the top of my fraction. Okay. I'm also going to look at the square root of 4x squared. Okay. Well, I know the square root of 4. 4 is a perfect square, so it's going to be 2. And if I'm looking at x... 2, I have x times x, so pairs come out front. So I have 2x coming out. Nothing left underneath. So my fraction now looks like 10x to the 2, square root of 3, over 2x. Because these are both on the outside of the radical, we can simplify that. So I can do 10 divided by 2, which is going to give me 5. x squared divided by x. I had 2, I took 1 away. And then a square root of 3. Okay, so that's probably the most work that you're going to have to do, but that's going to be your simplifying. That's called rationalizing the denominator. We have to make sure that we don't have any radicals or square roots in the denominators. The last thing that you're going to do is adding and subtracting radicals today. Here's the trick with this. The number underneath the radical has to be the same in order for you to put them together. So what you're going to do is you're going to simplify your radicals anytime that you possibly can. So when I'm looking at this first one, the square root of 3, I cannot simplify the square root of 3. But I know the square root of 12 I can. So the first number has to come from my perfect squares list. And my second one is what I would multiply it by to get back up to 12. So this first 7 square root of 3 I'm going to keep. Plus the square root of 4 is going to give me 2 square root of 3. Now that they are the same, it's kind of like combining like terms. They're both square root of 3s, so they're going to stay square root of 3s. You're just going to do the operation with the numbers out front. So 7 plus 2 is going to give me 9 square root of 3. Let's look at this next one here. We're going to break up what we can. So I'm going to have 50. I know I'm going to break 50 up into 25 and 2. I have that x that I can't do anything with. There's no pairs. I can't make a pair of it. So we know we're going to keep it underneath. So the 4 out front is going to come out front. The square root of 25 is 5. Remember, two numbers out front we multiply together. The square root of 2 I'm not going to be able to touch, and the square root of x I'm not going to be able to touch. So I'm going to have 20 square root of 2x for that first one.
Now we're going to carry it down. We have 32. I know that 32 can be split up into 16 and 2. And then I still have that x. So I have my 6. Square root of 16 is going to give me 4. And then I'm going to have the square root of 2 and the x that I can't touch. So when I multiply 6 times 4, I'm going to get minus 24 square root of 2x. What's underneath the radicals are the same. That's good. So I know that they're going to stay 2x. I'm just going to do the operation with what's out front. So 20 minus 24 is going to give me negative 4 square root of 2. All right, so that's all you're going to do with your radicals today. So I want you to go ahead and start that assignment, review your radicals. When you're done, go ahead and submit it in to Schoology. And then when I come back, we will go ahead and talk through some stuff together should it need be. Good luck.